Hello everyone, it's Arthur here from Metro Hobbies. Uh, it's the only video that we actually get Australian steam engines in. Luckily, this time instead of having a choice of one or two, we've actually got a choice of three. So we've got uh, three Victorian, well, three Australian steam engines. So we've got the beautiful D3 class, uh, which is perfect for anyone modeling from about 1901 all the way up to the 1970s, even the modern day. We've also got the J class, and we've also got the C38. Okay, so first off, we've actually got the C38 class. These are made by a relatively new manufacturer in the railway world. Then produced by a company called ARM. So, uh, and the, what's surprising about these engines is they're actually a starter engine. They're only about $300, and you get a C38, uh, which is perfect uh, for a replacement for the old Lima ones. So, you have the uh, the wheels, which are burnished wheels. This is uh, 3803 in uh, black, so this is probably late 60s. Uh, somewhat of a good engine, surprisingly, for the price tag. Uh, really good for beginners. If you wanted to get into Aust modeling Australian railways, this is how you do it. Uh, even if you want to get one of these engines and modify it so it's more of a high-end model, you can do that. It's a perfect uh, build for it. You can even get one of these, swap the body shell over for your old original Lima one if you are getting back into the railway hobby. And you've got practic practically got an old, uh, your old model running up with more modern uh, specs. Also, it does come with a tender. And what's surprising about the tender is it's actually got fixed bogies. Uh, yeah, which that is a weird design choice on uh, ARM. Next up, we actually move into our home state of Victoria. So we've got these. These are the J and the D3. So the J uh, was made by uh, the uh, made by Ixian. So, and this took him about three years to do. Uh, beautiful engine. Uh, a lot of it is diecast. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they only made about 600 per number, or uh, if they were unnumbered, only 600 of them. This is an oil burner one, because you can tell by the uh, by the blanking plate and the fact that it's actually got an uh, oil tank on its tender. Beautiful engine. I've got J500 myself, and I love it. I've actually highly weathered mine, and I've actually added real column to the tender. Uh, so you've got your Westinghouse brake pipe. Uh, well, brake compressor, you've got your Walsh Arts valve gear, uh, you've got the, the high boiler as on the prototype, you also have your different lubricators, this one's got a black uh, running plate, and, and you might have noticed this one's actually unnumbered, yes you can actually renumber this one to any that you want, uh, well any of the oil burning J, so I think that was J536 up to J559, which is actually good for, uh, which was a good idea because you can then model a certain prototype even if it was scrapped. Uh, You've also got a little bit of undercarriage, uh, you've even got a couple of uh, detail actually inside the frames themselves. Uh, the whole thing is actually die cast, so it's got a lot of weight to it. So that means a really good pulling power. I think it can pull something like 50 freight cars up a pretty decent hill, and that's the uh, tender itself. So because it's an oil burner, you've got the oil tank, uh, that's the rear of it. So uh, it's actually got proper KDs, the buffers are sprung. Uh, it's actually got uh, the tender and the engine itself is actually uh, uncovered when you get it. Uh, all you just need is just a Phillips uh, a Phillips screwdriver just to plot it in and there you go you've got yourself a running uh, J-Class. Uh, really good unit, uh, sold up like hotcakes. Uh, and this is a relatively new arrival, this is the Phoenix Reproductions Dash uh, SDS D3 class. So, uh, perfect for anyone who's modeling anywhere from 1906, 1907, all the way up to even like the 70s, if not 80s, even one day. So this is D3639. This engine was uh, hauled the commissioner's train. They come in uh, other running numbers, uh, they come in, I think one of them is actually the Baldwin one. Uh, they've actually, what's interesting is they actually have a swing out 
uh, fake kappa, like how they've actually got on the prototype. So the prototype would be like that, holding all the stock, and if it was holding more than one stock, they would actually flick that coupling out, so you can actually uh, connect it. It's a really, really good uh, idea. Uh, and connecting, uh, you've got beautifully painted handrails, and beautifully painted. Once again, die cast, uh, even the uh, back head of the, uh, of the uh, cab itself, it is beautiful. Uh, add a couple of figures in there, and you, it will add a whole amount of life to it. Uh, this is a tender, of course, so this is where all the electronics would be for the DCC and sound. Uh, you've got uh, a fake coal load, so you've got the uh, the headlight and the marker lights. Uh, yes, the buffers are sprung, uh, and it's actually got the uh, it's actually got the proper bogies on that. Same with the J. And the good thing is, unlike the J, where it can be a little bit of a pain to put together to run. The thing is with the D3, all you have to do is just make sure that the pins are wired up. Which they are, and you just simply press them together. And there you go. And that's pretty much firmly on. Uh, so yeah, uh, the D3s go for about 500 and something dollars DC and about uh, 700, and 700 and something dollars uh, with sound. Uh, the J's are five hundred and ninety-five dollars, and the C thirty-eight is about uh, three hundred dollars. Uh, the thirty-eight class takes an eight-pin decoder. The J takes a uh, 20, twenty-one-pin decoder, and the D threes, if they're not sound equipped like this model, uh, they should come with a twenty-one-pin chip in the tender. So yeah.